afternoon, everyone. My name is Jessica Parker White. I'm the education coordinator here at CMC Arts. And I'm so excited today because today, March the 23rd, starts our first of a two part series at Art at Home with Miss Oshana James. Miss James is no stranger to St. Croix. She was uh, born, born and raised here in St. Croix, but she's been spending some time now in New York City. Um, and the two of us actually taught together back in the day at Author A. Richards. So I'm so excited that to get to reconnect with her and have her here for part of our Art at Home series that is sponsored by the St. Croix Foundation. Ms. James is an amazing uh, educator, English teacher. Um, she is also an actress. I've been gotten the pleasure of seeing her before here um, on the stage at the Caribbean Theater. Um, and she also, you've also been in movies before too, right, Ms. James? In where? In movies. No, I've been in a couple commercials. Um, I don't think it, like I have to go back. No, I have not been in a movie. I, oh, I, I, was, I uh, thought I've seen you before in one of in, um, the um, in one of these series, but uh, but my apologies. I just know how talented she is as an actress and also as a writer too. Um, so I'm very excited today um, for those of you that are joining on Zoom um, to introduce no other than Oshana James. Good afternoon, ladies. It's so good. Um, I'm sorry I'm not here enjoying or there enjoying the weather. It's been today decided to be winter again. So it's like 30 something degrees to maybe 40 degrees today. So a little bit chilly. Um, we had some little teasers that were like 70 degrees, but nothing like like home for sure. Like Miss Parker said, I um, born and bred on St. Croix. My family has been there for ages. I just recently in 2013, went to grad school in here in New York and then graduated, I'm here. I've been home, I have not been home since the last hurricane. Um, maybe I was once, I forget. But it's been a couple of years, definitely. So I'm gonna, today, I'll talk to you about the next two days, today and tomorrow, hopefully. Is everybody, can everybody come tomorrow as well? Yay, good. All right, so today, Tomorrow is actually, or today is a lead into tomorrow. So we're going to work on um, getting ourselves in our body, getting ourselves relaxed, doing a little bit of writing, and then taking that writing, the thing we produced today, and um, working on it a little bit tomorrow and presenting it to each other. So that's what it's going to look like for the last two days. Right now, today, we're going to do a little bit of movement um, and some writing exercise. So to start, just as an introduction, if everybody can stand up, I'm gonna watch as we're doing this. That'll be really great. Um, I hope I don't have any shy ladies here. And it's the four of us, so please relax. We um, don't have the pressure of other people watching us. It's just us. Um, so we should be okay with that. So the first thing we're gonna do is some introductions. So what I want you to do, I'll go first and model what we're gonna do. And I'm going to, maybe I'll turn my computer a little bit this way so you can see. Uh, here we go. So the idea is just to say your name and a movement that goes along with your name. And so that way we can attach visually and movement wise the name with the person. I know, besides Miss Parker, I know one person because I know her family, that's Miss Edwards Onile. Um, um, but the rest of you, I don't know. So when I see your movement and hear your name, I'll be able to connect your name and the movement. Everybody follow me so far? So I'm gonna go, you can call me Miss Oshana, that's fine. And so I'm gonna go, my name is Miss Oshana and then I do a movement. And so then everybody will repeat, Miss Oshana. So that's my movement, let me do it again. And then I'll call on somebody else to go. And, oh, the names aren't up anymore. So I can't see people's names. Oh, there it is, I can do it. All right. So, so ladies, you might wanna have your, your, 
go ahead and unmute yourself if you can, if you're in a good spot to unmute. Um, yeah, go ahead and unmute yeah. that way you're just ready to go when it, you're called yeah, upon your to do your movement okay and we do have one person uh miss james who's in a chair she can't stand right this moment but i just told her just do the movement in the chair okay yeah you can do your movement in your chair don't no problem all right so i'm gonna go miss oshana onila you next so everybody should repeat after me so here, let me backtrack. So I'm going to go Miss Oshana. Everybody say Miss Oshana and do the same movement. Then I'll call on the next person. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thumbs up. Clear? Good. Yeah. All right. Miss Oshana. Miss Oshana. Oshana. Then I call on Onile. Um, We're going to repeat her. Onile Edwards. Onile Edwards. And you should repeat the name also. Onile Edwards. Edwards. Onile Edwards. Edwards. Good. Do I call in another name? I can do it. It's okay. Alexis? Um, uh, Alexis. Don't think about it too much. Alexis. 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 Miss mm -hmm. Parker? Um Miss Parker. Miss Parker. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh Miss Webster. Okay. Leonice. Leonice. Yes. Yes. And then last but not least, Miss Garcia. Annabelle. 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 Okay, great. So now I know O'Neill, Leonice, Annabelle. Alexis and Miss Parker. Good. So that was just a little quick thing. We're gonna go on, move on. Um, and you, gave, you gave them the easy version, Miss James, because I've done it before. I've seen people do it before. We have to remember everybody's movement. Everybody's, everybody's name. Everyone's name. Yeah. So you gave that us that is really hard. And I, we could have done that because it's only four people. But so note this out for next time. <laughs> And we right, can remember what they are for tomorrow, too, at the start of class. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's a good one. <laughs> so the next thing we're going to move into is this exercise. Um, I learned it in grad school, actually, and I've since done other productions, been in other collaborations where we've done it as well. And it's this theater or dance composition technique called viewpoints. And viewpoints really is an idea... It's a way to compose, like if you're a choreographer and you're making a dance, or if you're a director and how to arrange people on the stage. But it also is a way to get in your body and to focus not only on your body, but on the people. Usually you do it in a space where there's several people and you're walking around. Um, your, your body in relation to other people in the room, your body in relation to the room, and your body in relation to that room, to the larger world. Um, so we're gonna do a little short version of that and then do some writing. So there's one person that doesn't have any space to walk around, right? Correct, one person. All right, um, so maybe if that person can then just maybe look around and think and do the exercises like imagine, um, is what I would suggest for the for the person who cannot um, move around. The others of you, if we can also get up, um, get some space if you have um, to move your laptop or if you need to push a chair, don't worry, but we need to stand up so we can get to do this. So we're gonna be walking around in your space, whatever that space is that you have. All right, so if everybody can stand up, that'll be great. Let me get my timer so I can time myself how long we have. All right. So Alexis and Leonice, can you stand up too? Annabelle, you have to stay in your chair, right? No, it's uh, Leonice is the one. Oh, in it's the Leonice chair. that stays in the chair. Mm -hmm. So if Annabelle, thank you, O'Neill. 
and mm -hmm. Annabelle, because you have that filter on, it might make it so that we can't see you. So if possible, depending on where you are in your house, yeah. if possible, if you turn the filter off and just have a wall behind you, um, sometimes with those bigger filters, it makes it so you disappear on us. Yeah. All right. So what we're going to start off with is if everybody can just start walking around their space. If you walk outside of your camera, that's okay. Um, but just start walking your regular walk around your space. You can go ahead and start, start walking. And then the idea is to get to know your space um, in a way that is just different. So just your regular walk, your regular walk. Anila, if you can slow down a little bit, just slow it a little bit. You're not in a rush to go any place. You're not going extremely slow. You're just kind of casually walking around your room. All right. Let's take a few seconds, take in everything around. So what you're gonna do now is imagine that there's this imaginary string attached to the very top, the crown of your head. And so your head and your neck are elongated as you're walking around. Keep walking, don't stop moving. Keep walking, your neck and your head are elongated. Roll your shoulder blades down so you relax your shoulders. Kind of dangly arms, relax your arms. Your shoulders are relaxed and your head is still elongated. A trick that this one technique teacher taught me, and I always remember because it sounds so weird, is that imagine your head back and your neck forward at the same time. So your head is kind of dangling on the very tip top of your spine, kind of there where your spine ends is a little bit in your skull. So your head is relaxed, your neck is relaxed, your shoulder is relaxed. So as you're walking also now, and you're looking at things around your room, soften your gaze. So you're not staring at things, but you're using kind of your peripheral vision and you're seeing, you're opening up to what's around you. Maybe in ways that you haven't noticed. You notice maybe a nick on the wall or a piece of paint coming off or something on the floor and you're still walking. Try not to take the same um, direction every time, maybe walk in a new direction. Maybe take a stop and notice, keep your eyes gazed on the first thing and you stop, the first thing your eyes land on and look at that thing, but soften your gaze so that you can expand what you're seeing. So I'm not staring like a hard gaze at that thing, whatever your eyes landed on, but your gaze is soft. You should stop and look at that thing again. And now start walking again. And we're gonna think about some things as we're walking. Now, if we could speed up our walk, just keep walking, but faster and walk a little bit faster and a little bit faster. If you could speed up like you're in a rush, you're late and you know you can't be two seconds late to this thing because your life depended on it. Just keep walking pretty as fast as you can. Now slow it down again. Let's see if we can walk backwards without looking back. Do you remember the layout of your room or your space that you can walk backwards without thinking about it? Like what is behind you? What is next to you? So you don't have to take a peek back, but try doing that for a few seconds. Good, I see Onile trying. I saw Miss Edwards, she's out of the screen. Oh, there goes Miss Schroeder. All right, so the next thing is keep walking. Now we're gonna stop walking backwards and you're gonna walk regular forwards, but now imagine you're on a hot beach. Like to me, the hottest beach on St. Croix is Sandy Point because there's no shade. So imagine you on Sandy Point and it's a hot, hot, hot day and the sand is hot. How would that change your movement? How would that change how you're walking? Imagine that the sand really burning your feet 
and ain't no shade and you just got out the water and your feet is really, really, really hot. Oh, I see Miss Parker kind of jumping, Miss Shraddha taking bigger steps. Oh, Nile, how's the sand? How's the sand? Hot, hot. Like I can, that is such a specific feeling. The ground is really, really hot because it's one of those days and you're on a beach with ain't no shade. Yes, perfect. Now imagine that you're walking barefoot off of the beach, but now you're on the part where your car is or your, your parents' car or the, the street and then you got a bunch of chuk chuk. So you have chuk chuk under your feet and one stick you in your foot and then you try to go to the next spot, but another one stick you. Oh my goodness, that's the worst pain. So how does that affect your walk? Oh yes, Ms. Shrada. I see Ms. Shrada kind of limping. She's shaking, that's cool. Onile, how is that affecting how you're walking with this? First it was a hot sand, now is a chuk chuk under your feet. How are you walking? Oh my goodness. All right, so you got the chuk chuk out, the sand is cool. So now you're walking really, really, really slowly. You're walking really slowly. As slow as you can. Imagine that it's a hot day, the same hot day. You just left the sand, you just left the chuk chuk, and now you have to walk up. What's a high hill? You have to walk up the beast. Because <clears throat> a car broke down, you gotta walk up the hill to go on the other side of the beast, right? So, how is that gonna affect your walking? Oh, yes, I see you, Miss, Miss um, Leonis kind of trugging along, going up the beast. How does that change your body when you're walking up that hill? Uh-huh, I see Ms. Schroeder. I'm looking for the cell phone service. As soon as I get cell phone service, I'm <laughs> That's calling everyone I know, so I don't have to make it all the way. You don't have to make it all the way up the beast. Phone. Yes, That's a funny one. So you're walking up the beast and it's super hot and that hill ain't no joke. We have world-class triathletes that have a hard time going up the beast. And you're gonna slow, slow, slow your motion down. Now, if you can make your way slowly, that same slow space to the furthest corner that you can go to away from your camera, right? In your same room. Because now we're gonna do this uh, other exercise. Um, keep going, keep walking and make your way until you stop at that point that's furthest away in that same room where you are, where your computer is. And you're going to slowly, very slowly, make your way to the table where your pen and your paper is. But listen to the direction. So we're walking. And I want you to imagine that first, there are two halves. First, you're gonna imagine that you have, you're walking, you're making this trip, and that all of your ancestors, your mother's 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 mother, your father's 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 father, all of these ancestors, like 300, 400 of them are behind you. And they're helping you push up that hill. What does that walk look like? How do you change your movement when you imagine that all your ancestors are behind you supporting you going up that hill? How does that change your relationship to that hill? How does that change your relationship to your own self in your body? Because your movements are gonna change now, right? Because if you have 300 ancestors supporting you in the back and you're slowly making your way up that hill and imagine that your pencil and your pen are at the very top of that hill and keep walking slowly with them in mind that they're helping you and you have their support. How does that change how you're moving? And think about it too. Now, as you're slowing and they're supporting, I suppose the dynamic change and suppose you have to get to the top of that hill but your ancestors on in the back you're the one leading them. So now you're in front of them and you're leading them up the hill because that hill is where their freedom is. That hill is where your freedom is. That hill is this light, the proverbial light at the end of the tunnel. But it's not a tunnel, it's a hill. So your ancestors, before they were behind you helping you, now you're the one in charge. You're the one that's gonna help them. 
you're the one that they're looking to to get them to the hop, top of the hill. How does that change your movement? How does that change in your body? How does that change in the way you approach that task? And slowly keep walking and keep walking and keep walking. They're looking to you for the guidance. They're looking to you to get them to that point. How does that change your perspective on this task? They're no longer behind you, but you're leading them. You're leading them. Right? Slowly make your way to the table. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you five minutes. I'll put my timer on. And with your pen or your pencil, whatever writing utensil you have, you're going to write. And I'll give you the first five minutes to write about, or three minutes, the first three minutes to write about that ancestor walk, right? When you were leading the ancestors, well, first they were pushing you up. They were behind you, pushing you up. And now, and then we'll switch. So let's start. Let me set my timer. Um, yep, I'll set it for four minutes. So you're going to write about that ancestor walk experience. Just what was going through your mind, the thoughts, how your body changed, the thoughts of those roles being reversed when they were looking to you for guidance, and then when they were also the ones ushering you, when they were the ones pushing you towards the top of that hill, the pinnacle, right? So go ahead, start, start writing. We're writing. I didn't hear you. Writing a poem? Nope, you're just free writing. However it comes out, if it comes out as a poem, that's great, but it doesn't have to, you're just writing. Okay. You're just writing whatever thoughts come to you, however it comes out. No self-editing, just let it come out. You don't have to worry about spelling or form or content, however it comes out. It's fine. Just keep writing. So you have about two more minutes, just FYI, keep writing about that experience and whatever comes, comes, it's fine. Again, don't edit. Check our time. We have about a minute left. Don't rush yourself. I'm just letting you know. Remember to include the two perspectives the one of your ancestors leading you and the one of you leading them. 
or them looking to you for guidance and to be the one. Start finishing up your last thing. Make that to a close. Or bring that to a close, I mean. And we'll spend another couple of minutes just talking about that process, um, what that was like, kind of checking in how everybody's doing, and then we'll move on to some more writing. Who would like to go? Tell me, what was it like? What do you think? How did it change? What were your thoughts? Whatever you want to share. Who would like to go? Ms. Schrader, how about you? Tell us what it's like, or the process was like. And if you have, sorry, just let me add to you. If you have any questions or comments, I mean, if you have any questions in addition to your comments, you can ask them now also. For me, the process was very slow. Mm -hmm. and to be honest they're pushing they weren't pushing me to my um limit okay they're they're pushing me to my beginning or at mm. least my future oh wow you just gave me goosebumps awesome that's awesome that's awesome that's awesome that's like note to self let me add that even actually let me i'm gonna put that in my notes right now like that's a great perspective that i haven't even um, thought of it's so interesting you know they always say that the teacher is a constant student and in this case you actually just taught me something like how do your ancestors push you beyond your limits and, and we're going to talk about futuring ourselves also in a little bit so how do they push you to become something that you don't even know what that thing is yet that's pretty cool thank you for that anybody else Okay, um, I would say that like my ancestors are pushing me to do better in myself. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like to use the potential that I have and, you know, work on myself and also like to complete what um, what I'm what I've done, like mm -hmm. don't get hanging and stuff. So that's what I would say. Nice. And was that so quick question and either of you or somebody else too? Did you feel like that happened in the scenario when they were behind you or when you were the ones that they were looking to for these answers or for the guidance um, i feel like when they were behind of me okay okay onile or annabelle how about you i'll go okay um i feel like my ancestors were pushing me mm -hmm. to um they were input pushing me to do what i love mm -hmm. and to not not listen to what anybody has to say mm -hmm. but to but to also take the criticism well nice. because sometimes you need the criticism of other of other people perfect that's perfect and so like eliminating all the distraction and focusing on what you know your goal is that's excellent how about you miss annabelle anything to add or questions um i felt like when my ancestors were quote unquote pushing me it was more like of a climb and a reach to do something greater or better you know to achieve whatever goal i have set in mind mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is so i i am impressed you guys are impressing me I was gonna say I, I love their insight. They're uh, wise beyond their years here. As really? they were. Yeah, I, I was very impressed with everyone's comments so far. Yeah, I have to say I, I was thinking of specific um, ancestors, my grandparents that have passed. I was mm -hmm. thinking of my aunt, and then um, deep going a little deeper into this, I um, I had an uncle that passed away when I was very young. I think you know, I might have mm -hmm. been eight. And mm -hmm. so remembering him um, yeah. as part of the whole process too. Yeah. And, 
Um, and especially for my grandparents, I was saying their tire bodies and um, in, the, in their lifetime were transformed as we were climbing up this hillside. Um, yeah. And I was also remembering too, my, uh, my grandfather, he would used to do walks in the neighborhood with us nice. as children. Nice. Um, and he would tell us about specific trees yeah. and then he would quiz us on the way back. So <laughs> I, I wrote in mine, I said, pay attention to what your, uh, what grandfather is saying. Oh, you know, nice. be, so these messages were coming to you. Nice. Yeah. So it, it was nice to basically kind of like take a few minutes here with this exercise, uh, Ms. James, and revisit some of those ancestors. That is so great. Point. And I, Part of, too, what I like about this exercise is that it gives you something that you can always go back to and always reference. And is it really is a technique that you can use, like, let's say you have an, a school assignment or you have, or you're just a writer or you want to make something and you can use that as a practice to kind of ground yourself in. So that those things allowing yourself or allowing those messages to come. Because if we're so busy sometimes, yeah, our access is there, but we don't take the time to listen to the things that they have to see. So this is just one way and that all of us can practice in a room. If we don't have a room, if you have outside, like I've done it outside with no shoes on, that changes things as well. So just keep that in mind. So we're going to keep writing. Um, actually, if I, we could just take 30 seconds and stretch and move, if you want to get up and wiggle it, if you need to get a drink of water, do that. Everybody good? Do we need any bathroom break or anything? Um, can I actually go to the bathroom quick? Yep. Thank you. Yep. So while you're doing that though, Leonice, what we'll do, you can just jump in. Hopefully you can hear me. I'll just have her jump in Miss Parker where we are with the writing. Okay. I yeah? was curious too, Miss yeah, Jane. I see you. Okay. If other people were look, thinking and when they were writing, were they thinking about specific ancestors when you guys were doing your writing? I was just curious. I don't know if um, Annabelle and Leonis are still there. So um, Onile and Alexis, were you think, did any specific ancestors come to mind? No, just in general. How about you, Onile? Um, my grandfather, my great grandfather. Okay. Did you know them? Um, when I was younger, I had memories of him giving um, me and my cousins candy. Nice. <laughs> my grandpa like used to give me candy too. <laughs> he had like a mini fridge and he had, huh. and he, and he had insure and candy in there. <laughs> oh, that is such a sweet memory, insure and candy. That is hilarious, actually. <laughs> My grandfather, on that note too, like I think about my grandfather also a lot. He passed away when I was young, maybe like eight or nine, I think. And he used to, I don't know if you guys even know this candy. It's a local candy called Dondosla. So he used to bring home Dondosla all the time. And Dondosla is like a, I don't even know how to explain it. It's a local candy. And then he used to bring home these kind of like peppermint candies called um, Lassingers. And so I clearly remember him bringing those and having a treat with him. But um, all right, so we're gonna do some more writing for the next, we're at 5.14, so we have about 45 minutes. So we'll take about a half an hour, 20 minutes, a half an hour to do some more writing. And then we'll share out what Actually, we have. Miss James, this ends at 5.30, so it's just one hour together. Oh, and then you have next time. I keep, I keep that in my, ha my mind that it's an hour and a half. No, right. we're, we're not in school school. We just get a little, <laughs> we just get a little time with little you. But I keep having in my head that it's an hour and a half. Okay, so that's fine. So we'll take, let's say we're at 5.15, so we have 15 minutes. So let's take about half that time. Let's take seven minutes to write some more, and then we'll take, the last seven minutes to wrap up. Yeah? Yep. All right. We, can, we well, can always work on some stuff too, a little bit before class if we need to. Okay. All right. Um, so everybody's pen and pencil should be ready. And we're going to do some writing prompts. And I'll just shorten these. These writing prompts, actually, I learned I'm doing some fish trap writing prompts, Paloma. Oh. <laughs> these prompts, we always do in a check-in with a collaborator here who's also a cruiser, Ms. Paloma McGregor, in her um, 
her process, which is called fish trap process. It's a whole other thing that we could talk about. But I kind of like them also because it gets us thinking and moving and they're very easy. So pen and paper. And the first one you're going to write is um, the prompt is I am. And you go continue from there. However it comes out, it comes out. Don't self-edit. Just keep writing. I am. Okay, so start with I am and just continue um, writing. Yes. Yep. Okay. Oh, also, do I have to share with the class? No. No. There's some things that we're going to share, so don't feel like you can't write because you don't want everybody knowing that. So just keep writing. And whatever it is that you feel that you want to share at the end, that's what you share. Okay? Okay. I don't want that to inhibit what comes to you, this fear of sharing at the end. So the next one is I want. And keep writing, I feel. And just keep writing. I need. So these next few, I kind of changed up from what we normally do in Fish Trap. So think of, instead of I am, we're gonna go with we are. We are. And again, the idea is to just write. Don't think about it too much. Just let come whatever comes. We are. We want. We feel. We need. <coughs> this next one, what would you tell your future self? If you could talk to your future self, what would you tell your future self? Don't think about it too much. Just let whatever words, whatever thoughts, it doesn't have to be an organized essay or an epic poem. It just comes out, it is what it is. If it's a list of words, or if it is a poem, that's fine. So the next one is what message, and this one's a little tricky, I think. What message would your future self send back to you. So you're kind of projecting in the future to bring it back. The first one was what would you tell your future self? And now it's kind of like, what would this present self tell the future self? But what is your future self going to say back to you? I 
And so as we're wrapping up this last section, just go back at all of those 10 prompts. I can read them again quickly. The first half, I am, I want, I feel, I need. The second half, we are, we want, we feel, we need. Then the last two, what would your future self, or what would you tell your future self? And then what message do you think your future self will send back to you? We have about one more minute. And you can go back to either one of any of those prompts. You can continue writing or add some more to anyone that comes to you. We have just one minute left to do that. Just keep writing for our last minute. So start thinking about coming to an end. We just have a few more seconds to finish up that thought. Wrap that up. <coughs> Sorry, I'll drink some water. There's our timer. We should wrap up. So for the last, we have seven minutes. Let's um, just check in. How was that? If there's anything that anybody would like to share, I would love to hear it. Um, and don't feel, even if it's just one little section, that's fine. You know, some people may have written some things they don't want broadcasted and that's fine. I totally understand that. Um, but I would love to hear something if anybody is comfortable writing I mean, reading something that they came up with while in this whole process for the last hour or uh, 57 minutes that we've been with together. Can I share my first part? Of course. I, um, and actually, that's a good point, Anila. It could be from this last section or it could be from the first section. Either one, whatever you're comfortable sharing. Thanks for that, Anila. Go ahead. Okay, I have... I am sometimes an overthinker. I want lots of money. I need, I feel hungry. I need food. <laughs> that is cool. And thank you for that honesty and thank you for sharing. Anybody else ready to share <coughs> what they came up with? Go ahead, um, Alexis. What I wrote was, I am a symbol of peace, a descendant of fortune, a promise, a key to prosperity, a need, not a want. I also wrote, 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 we are descendants of nomads, children of a prophecy, different, a new tomorrow. Dear future me, who are you? Future me, I am tomorrow. Nice. Impressive. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you so much, Alexis. Anybody else want to share? I don't know. Denise, you... do you want to share? Annabelle, oh, just a line or two. You any have section. To... It doesn't you have to do this one. I don't think I want to share this one. Do you want to share the first, like your thoughts on the ancestor walk? 
Oh, uh, yeah, sure. You can share that one. You want me to um, read it? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you need me, I will help you, just as you helped me. I felt your presence pushing me to do better, pushing me to win. When you call me on, call on me for guidance to help you erase your sins, I will be there just as you do for me. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your love, support, and guidance. We will help each other out. That's what family does. My ancestor, to, from, and back. Nice. Thank you. You guys are making me tear up a little bit here. I know, I have I'm, to say. Of her. I'm so and, impressed and proud of these ladies. Oh I my know, goodness. and they haven't even gotten to go and think about it and edit it. I'm just blown away with uh, your, you guys have awesome um, English teachers too, I can tell since you guys yes. are there. so. Uh, yes, the, the teachers should be proud and the homeschooler should be proud yeah. as well. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Annabelle, would you like to go? I'm always contemplating whether or not to share, but I guess I'll share. Okay. Um, I am a hardworking individual. I am strong-minded. Um, I want to become a millionaire. I want better for myself. I want to be the most educated Black woman in my family line. I feel overwhelmed, but also happy. I feel like I'm going somewhere in my life, and I also feel the need for a break. I need rest. I need to stop procrastinating, and I need to focus on bigger and better things as I get older. Now, after that, I felt like I didn't really write good, so. And again, so, and I understand, I trust me, I understand that feeling. Um, but the same way I was saying, kind of try to write without editing. Don't be so hard on yourself because we spent maybe 20 minutes, a half an hour writing. We didn't get a chance to edit. We didn't get a chance to, for other eyes to see it, like all of the things. And a lot of times we need to be easy on ourselves because the rest of the world is gonna be pretty hard on us. If it's one person that should be easy on yourself is yourself. Don't give yourself such a hard time, sweetie. Miss um, Parker, do you wanna share? I, I was listening just now to um, what Annabelle was just sharing. And I have to say some of those same words I definitely have on there about needing to rest and uh, getting organized and uh, stop procrastinating, yeah. All, all things that uh, I think creative people tend to, um, yeah, kind of go yes. all over because our our uh, we've got so much going on. I think you know yeah. we don't we yeah. definitely don't do the straight line path. Um, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so I will share a little bit. Um, I said I am tired but happy and a little stressed, but it's all yeah. worth it. Change is not easy, and I hesitate, but I am so happy. Um, and then I did go into the, I need to rest. I need to get more organized. And I said, um, we are together learning, doing something different. Mm -hmm. um, we feel creative and supported. So those were a few of my sentences Excellent. in there. I am so unbelievably proud and happy that one, this happened and that two, we had all of this energy that came with willingness to share and willingness to try new things. And it may seem a little weird, but you still did it. And look at what you produced out of that process, which I'm so, so happy. So to close out, what we're gonna do is this. So you're just gonna say one thing that you are leaving here today. Like one word that comes to mind about this process, about the day, about how you felt with the hour that we spent together. And then one wish that you hope for tomorrow. So. I'll go first um, and then anybody can just jump in. My word is inspired. And tomorrow I hope for more inspiration. Mm -hmm. Somebody else can just jump right in. Or I can call you. <laughs> Ms. Webster, how about you? Sorry, just came back. So the, the prompt was, what's one word of, that will describe how you're feeling for today and then one thing that you wish for tomorrow? Oh, okay. Um, so one word that I'm feeling today is, I guess, happy. Um, and one word that I would wish for, for tomorrow is... Uh, hmm. Maybe, um, 
maybe excited. Okay. Or, That's yeah. fine. That's fine. Alexis? I don't exactly have a word. I was thinking of one, but I couldn't find the right one. Do you have a group of words, a phrase? Not really. Okay, so let me ask you this. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling calm. Okay, so calm is good. And how about for tomorrow? What is your hope for tomorrow? My hope for tomorrow is energized. Okay, so we'll bring some energy tomorrow. Uh, <coughs> Annabelle, how about you? Uh, I'm feeling motivated right now, and I hope for tomorrow. I I had a word, but I kind of forgot it. Um, <laughs> forgot, honestly, I don't know. Well, think of something else. What is? What do you think, or what do you wish would? Uh, oh, I remember. Easy going. I want tomorrow to be an easy going day. Okay, well, we hope that tomorrow is an easygoing day and you come in at 4.30 ready to go. Ms. Parker, how about you? I have to say my word for today would be impressed. I'm very impressed with the writing quality that these girls brought. I was impressed mm -hmm. how they did all the, the prompts that you asked them to do. I was impressed that people unmuted themselves and showed their lovely faces on the screen. Uh, we know that uh, you guys were a little tired of the Zooming, but as I promised um, on the advertisement that I knew that Miss James here would bring the energy, which she definitely did, and make this a very interactive uh, Zoom. So, um, and I'm hoping that we can get Miss James to come down here to St. Croix to actually do some workshops with us in person at CMC Arts, which would be oh, amazing. Uh, did I did I hear uh, I, because I know we have some very uh, great writers here as well as um, potential actresses as well that are, are with us today. Um, so impressed would be my word. And as far as tomorrow goes, I guess just uh, continuing that energy level um, mm -hmm. here for tomorrow. And um, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, day two is going to bring for us. So Me too. Yes. So bring your writing tomorrow. If you feel inspired and you want to write some more tonight, um, based on the things that we're kind of working on or delving into today, feel free to do that and then bring that in tomorrow. But at the very least, just bring the same notebook so you have the same notes from today for tomorrow. Okay. And okay. Before Thank you. Before you guys leave, let me um, again just wrap up by saying uh, thank you to St. Cory Foundation um, for again hosting this as part of our Art at Home series for March here with Miss Oshana James. And again, we're wrapping up day one and we look forward to tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Good afternoon. My name is Jessica Parker White. I'm the education coordinator at CMC Arts out in Frederickstead. And we're really excited because today is day two of our workshop for Art at Home series for March. And for March, we have no other than the wonderful, talented Oshana James joining us all the way from New York City, originally from St. Croix. She's now up in New York City doing big things up there. And we are lucky to have her on the line today to continue this wonderful uh, workshop that we started yesterday. So thank you again, Oshana, and thank you for the oh, talented wow. students too for joining us again today. Yes, thank you. And thank you ladies for returning, I'm glad. Um, so what we're gonna start, we're just gonna jump right in. We only have until 5.30. Um, so we're gonna jump right in. I'm gonna actually improvise and cut out some things <clears throat> as we go along. But let's do our official check-in and we'll start with our writing prompt that we did yesterday, but we're just gonna say it. All right, so the same I am, I want, I need, I feel. So right, I'll start and then I'll just call on somebody to go next. And when that person goes, you can call on somebody else, right? So we don't have to wait to pop in. You just can you somebody. say the three word, the three phrases in yeah. case we just want to jump down. Actually, I can put it, I'll type it in the chat. So I am. I want, I need, I feel. Oops. Okay. Um, I'll go first. I am grateful today. Um, grateful for 
a nicely curated um, friends that have been turned into family. I want huh, some beach time. <laughs> I need to rest some more today and I feel um, curious about how today is going, this session is going to unfold. And I call on Alexis. Today I am energized, I am calm. And I'm also curious to see how today will go. How about I want and I need? What I want is peace between Russia and Ukraine. Um, and I don't exactly know what I need right now. Okay, that's fair enough. And now call on somebody else to go. Alexis, Alexis can you call on somebody else to go? The next um, person. Annabelle. Okay. Annabelle, you're up. I don't know. I don't know um, if Annabelle's going to be able to, to participate. Oh, you're going to be able to go to Annabelle. It's, yes. We'll help you along too. So the first one is I am Annabelle. Okay. I am uh, excited for the weekend. And um, what's the next one? I want. I want to be over with school. <laughs> and then what's the next one? I need. I need to, um, I need to find patience. I feel. And I feel, um, I feel completed. Okay, now call on somebody else. Good, thank you for sharing. Uh, Leonis. Hello. Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I am happy and energized and excited. Um, I want for me to learn a lot about um, poetry and also um, I also want to write a lot today. Um, I need. Uh, I guess I need some water. <laughs> I'm thirsty. And you should get some water. Take care of that. And I feel, I feel energized. Yeah, I guess. Okay, <coughs> call on somebody else. Um, um, Charlene. That's Char only lady. Hi, Charlene. Okay. Um, I am excited what for what we're gonna do today. I want. Um, I want, um, I don't really know what I want. I feel curious what we're going to do today. I need, I need, I don't really know what I need. <laughs> how, how you feeling? I feel curious and excited at the same time okay. and just a little just a little nervous <laughs> nervous is good actors always say bring that nervous energy on the stage so you can um and then just let it out there on a the stage so a little nervousness is always a good thing um and then you can call on the last person um jay weiss all right, Jay Weiss is actually me. That's Miss Parker. Um, oh. It's okay. It's okay. It's fine. Um, so I wrote, I am proud about today uh, with the field trip um, with the kindergartners that came to visit the museum center. I was really proud about all the activities that happened. Um, I won a successful Saturday at the museum with all those workshops I was sharing with you guys. And I hope to see you there in person, uh, not just in Zoom world. Um, 
I need to focus on some me time, carving out a little bit of extra time uh, and making sure I'm drinking plenty of water. Like I think it was, it was an Alexis that needed some water and just making sure I'm focusing a little bit more on my health too. And I feel excited about the Zoom. I, I can't wait to hear uh, more of your writing. I, I was really blown away and um, impressed yesterday with the quality uh, of your writing. And I know that Ms. James is gonna bring on some, um, bring out our creativity today. So I'm excited mm -hmm. for today's Zoom. Good. Thank you everybody um, for sharing. So this actually, fits really well. I really like to start classes um, with checking in how people are doing, how you're feeling, because whatever kind of performance or even as a student, when you show up to learn in a classroom or in a workshop or at home and it's study time, you can't ignore all the other things that are going on around in your personal lives, in your communities, in the world, all of those things affect how you show up in that space. And the same thing goes for acting, right? The same thing goes for performance, be it an acting performance, be it reading a poem, be it presenting in a class or for work, or if you're doing a that, whatever that thing is, if you're making a craft, the outside world and the outside environment always affects some way that product because we don't live in a vacuum right and so of course those things are going to affect so leonise i suggest you go get some water even if it takes two minutes just go get it and come back okay. um um so today i did not have planned much writing time um but we could kind of fit that in but let me jump right into this next section and let's just get up and get our blood flowing a little bit and maybe we can even just start with that just shake it out get it out get it out get it out if you want to stand up and shake it out that's fine loosen up your shoulders only i don't see you moving leonisa i can't see you hopefully you're going for some water annabelle I trust that you're kind of loosening your bones and getting ready to go, right? So what we're going to do now is I'm going to get up to, we're just going to do kind of like what we did yesterday. So one person is going to do a movement and then everybody's going to follow. And then I would like, hopefully we're not too shy, somebody else to just Maybe after, let's say, 30 seconds of doing that first movement, somebody changed the movement and we all organically um, start copying and start doing what they're doing, right? So hopefully it moves organically. If not, I'll have to call on people. But my hope is that people just jump in and start doing a new movement. And I'll start it off to show you what I mean, or just to go first. So I'm gonna do my movement Stand up. Have a tight back, right? So I'm just gonna go up and everybody should follow me. So I'm waiting, I'm standing up and you're just gonna roll your body down, 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 down. And we're gonna keep doing this until somebody else starts kind of hang out here, wiggle your shoulders a little bit, loosen up and then slowly, if you can imagine, each vertebra and you're slowly rolling up. Your head is going to be the last thing and your lower back and the middle of your back and your upper back and here and you're up and somebody should take over. We're gonna go again. Everybody stretch up, 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 up. We're gonna keep doing this until somebody starts doing something else. Roll down, oh, here's Miss Parker. Let's copy Miss Parker. A little and washing switch. machine action. And switch, and switch, and switch, and, and switch. Oh, my hands I think I just saw somebody doing something. I can't see. Oh, oh here's Miss Parker doing this. So we keep doing this until somebody switches the movement. We're switching. We're going to keep doing this. One of you ladies takes over. OK. Oh, for good job, Onile. We're doing some arm circles. That's good for me because I have a shoulder issue. 
up and we're stretching the knees. Oh, yes. Uh. Uh, oh, yes, and here goes Ms. Shrada. Perfecto. Annabelle, I don't know um, your space situation. Hopefully, you can get some of these in and you can switch. Oh, Shana, how did you know I needed a little yoga stretch today? Thank <laughs> you. Oh, my gosh, we all know. It's so funny. You don't know you need it till you do it. All right, good. Let's shake it out. Okay. All right. So what is next? So in preparation for today, so this is what was supposed to happen today. So yesterday um, we did the writing portion. And so today we should talk about and do some things in preparation to quote unquote, perform or performing our pieces. A lot of the work that I do, um, I collaborate with other people, but I also write my own work and perform them. Um, the last thing I did on St. Croix was probably 2016, 2017. Um, and it was an outside performance for a one woman show that I wrote. And it was the corner of, Hospital and Queen Cross Street in Fredericksted. Um, Hospital Street is that street um, when you pass the post office and you're going the back way, like you're going to like range. If everybody follow, anybody here from Fredericksted? Who's from Fredericksted? O'Neilly, Miss Parker. All right. Do the rest of you know Fredericksted at all? Yeah, I live in Lagrange. Okay. So, you know, so that road, if you're going past the post office to so go to LaGrange on the back way on that side, that first corner right there, not King Street, but the next corner of Hospital Street. Um, um, well, not hospital, not, so it's King Queen Hospital. So that street there uh, is where I did it, but that's tangential. My point is, is that I write and perform work. And so with performing, there's some basic, basic, basic things, right? So getting in your body, getting warmed up, getting your blood moving is one of them because you want to be um, as energized as possible, right? So another thing that you have to do is vocal warm-ups. So we just warmed up our body. Let's do this. Clap your hands together. Clap, clap, clap. Miss Schroeder, clap, clap, clap. Rub, rub, rub. Do you feel like heat in between your hands? And you're going to massage your face and kind of let's focus here on our jaw because we're going to focus on or do some vocal warm ups and rub in between here. Your jaw actually goes up into your skull a little bit. There's a hinge right here. You can feel it if you go like that. Here. Right. And kind of rub that. Okay. And so what I'm going to do now is I have here, I'm going to drop it in the chat, just a short little paragraph for us to do here. There it is. And so it's not a tongue twister. I do have some tongue twisters after this, but this really um, is an exercise on different um, vowels and consonants and blends. And the point is, is to practice our enunciation because sometimes when we're on stage, we have to, and if you notice my speech pattern changed a little bit, when we're on stage, we have to over enunciate so that if you imagine if you're on a stage and the person in the back, back, back audience has to understand what you're saying, you kind of have to exaggerate not only your movements, but your words. So look at this right here. I'll go first so you can see and hear what I mean, right? So it says, eat each green pea, aim straight at the game. Ed said, get ready. It is in Italy. I tried my kite. Oaks grow slowly. Father was calm as he threw the bomb on the dock. 
An odd audience applauded Claude. Go slow, Joe, you're stepping on my toe. So what did you notice about how I read this thing? Anybody? Uh, I heard that like for, especially like T's and stuff, you like said them harder. And like for like O's, you like said t O, so, like you like kind of like hold it a little bit longer than other people would. And you also like, when it came to like comments and stuff, like you made sure you, that, you, that um, the person could hear that it was a comma. Okay, good. <coughs> Anybody else? Go ahead, Onile. You said it, you were saying it fast and you, first you were saying it fast and you went a little bit more slowly mm -hmm. and you were like exaggerating the words a little bit and saying it loud. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so, other, so other people can hear you. Yes, exactly. And so a lot of times too, when we're on stage, we have to speak a whole lot slower than comes naturally. Um, especially Caribbean people. I think we tend to talk very quickly and very fast. And so um, it's really a hard lesson to a difficult lesson to learn to slow down each word. So who thinks that they would like to take a jab at reading this short little paragraph and practicing their enunciation? Who would like to try? Please don't be shy. Go ahead, Onile. Thank you for being the first one. You're unmuted. She's mute, yeah. Unmute yourself. That's okay. And thank you for being so brave to try. I was curious. Yes. I was curious <laughs> too before you get started. How many of you that are online right now have actually performed before? Have you ever been on a stage or had an audience watch watch you perform? Oh uh, uh, well, yeah, I've performed before, but like not. I haven't performed um like reading things. Like I've like danced an act before okay so even with dancing too right and that's a good question miss parker i'm glad you asked that because i had it in my head to ask and i forgot so thank you but um so yeah so this is a great exercise for that and also we can talk about how some of that stuff when it i'll have some time for you to ask any questions how let's say as a dancer leonise that can translate um or some of these techniques can translate to dance performance all right onile <clears throat> Eat each green pea, aim straight at the game. Ed said, get ready. It is in Italy. I tried my kite, oaks grow slowly. Father was calm as he threw the bomb on the dock. An odd audience applauded Claude. Go slow, Joe, you're stepping on my toe. Good, that was a good <coughs> first try. I just also add, remember to complete the ending sounds. Because I'll even too, as Caribbean people, we cut off the ends of words. So step in instead of stepping, right? Which is fine. But if you're on a stage and you want to be clear um, <clears throat> and not have your words, uh, what's the word, misunderstood, um, <clears throat> we should, I'm going to drink some water. We should pay extra attention to to ending sounds. Anybody else want to try? Um, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Eat each green pea. Aim straight at the game. Ed said, get ready. It is in Italy. I tried my kite. Oaks grow slowly. Father was calm as he threw the bomb on the dock. An, uh, an odd audience applauded Claude. Go slow, Joe. You're stepping on my toe. Good. All right. <clears throat> That's good, everybody. Um, any questions so far? Okay. So the next thing I have for us to practice vocally is just some tongue twisters. Um, I think, okay, let me try this again. I will highlight... And, and we can probably all do these at once. We can unmute 
um, and do these. I'm gonna drop them in the chat right now. Control C. All right, so here's one. <clears throat> this one, the first one, she says she shall sew a sheet. Who thinks they can say that? Actually, let's just all try it and we, I can listen. Um, you can unmute and we can all try the first one. She says she shall sew a sheet. It's really hard. <laughs> Let me see. Everybody unmute your mic. Unmute you and Annabelle, Yanis, I see you're unmuted. Alexis. She says she shall sew a sheet. Says she shall sew a sheet. Sheet. Let's see if we can. <laughs> she we can all just try says she this. shall sew a sheet. Wow. <laughs> she okay. says she shall sew a sheet. I think maybe the trick is to maybe um, put a beat in there or rhythm and maybe finding a rhythm to say it makes it a little easier. Alexis, you want to try? No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> How about Jesus. somebody else? We can try the next one. Oh. But noise and noise and oyster, any noise and noise and oyster, but noisy noise and noise and oyster more. Phew. Odila, you want to try that one? Yeah. <laughs> try it. She says she shall sew a sheet. What noise a noise an oyster? Any noise a noise an oyster, but a noisy noise a noise an oyster more. Red, <laughs> red, that, so that's one. red leather. leather. That's one, isn't it? <laughs> yellow red, leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Leonis, how about you try red. that one? Red leather, yellow leather. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, red leather, yellow leather. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yellow leather. leather. Red, red, yellow leather, leather, yellow leather. Yes. Red leather, yellow leather. It's kind of hard, but you could. Yeah, it is. And so the idea is to kind of loosen up your tongue. Um, and again, enunciation so you can practice. Because so, sometimes you say red, red, yellow, red, yellow, yellow, yellow. So the idea again with these is to, um, <clears throat> it's just to practice and loosen up your tongue and practice enunciation. Annabelle, you want to try one? I don't know if she Don, can. I think maybe she got she got booted off. I don't see her. Uh, yeah, she was having some issues for today. Okay. Um, uh, Miss James, perhaps you can. I know you've got this in the chat for us, but perhaps you can just send me a word document and I'll send it to um our actresses so they can practice some more of this too on their own. Yeah. All um, right. So I can send. Well, it's actually in the Google Doc that I shared with you. Okay. Yeah, it's, I have them uploaded in there. Okay. Um, what time is it? Five ten. So I'm gonna skip several things because we're down to 20 minutes. Did everybody bring some, what they worked on writing yesterday? You have yours, Anile, Alexis, Leonis, I can't see you. So do you have yours? Yeah. You yeah. have something great. Okay, perfect. Um, <clears throat> let me see, I'm gonna take that out. All right, so I think what we're going to do is this. I'm going to, let's hear everybody's reading again. Let's share what you chose to, um, remember, I, if you remember, I had asked you to pick something out that you were willing to share for today. So let's hear it. And then um, I have one exercise that we're going to do and that can help with us on presenting those and then we will present them again. So let's hear them initially. We'll do an exercise and then we're gonna hear them again and that should take us um, to our, our 5.30 mark. Okay, who would like to go first? Leonis, how about you? Uh, uh, I don't really have anything because I shared mine yesterday. Yeah, so the same thing, that's what I was asking. If you, uh, you don't have to make anything new. So it could be the same thing that you shared yesterday. I'm just wanted to hear what, <clears throat> um, let's say you were, it was time to perform and you're going to read that piece to a group of people. And this is for everybody. How would you interpret that piece and present it for this? Let's say we had a poetry night at the museum and there's friends and family there and you're going to read that piece. How would you perform it? And that's for everybody to think in their minds. 
and then we can do that. Okay. So I'll, I'll start reading again. Okay. When you need me, I will help you just as you've helped me. I felt your presence pushing me to do better, pushing me to win. When you call me for guidance to help you erase your sins, I will be there just as you do for me. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your love, support, and guidance. We will help each other. We will help each other out. That's what family does. My ancestor to, from, and back. Excellent. Good job, Leonis. I heard you enunciating and and um, enunciating each word, and that was awesome. And taking pauses, and you did not rush through it, which a lot of um, young performers tend to do is rush. So that was actually an excellent, very excellent first go round. Um, Onile. Um. Yeah. Can I read the second part, which is the we are, we want. You can read anyone you want. Okay. We are empowering. Oh my gosh. We are empowering. Mm -hmm. We want equality. We feel connected. We need peace. Excellent. Now, Onile, how about this? How about if I say read it again and this time... Maybe hold it up, maybe if you prop it up so we can see your expression. And how about if you say it like you're trying to convince these audience of grown-ups that this is what young people want. You want to affect that emotion in them of saying, okay, I understand, they get it. Like you want them to get it. Okay. We are empowering. We want equality. We feel connected. We need peace. Okay, great. That was much, you like took your time with each one so it can land, right? And that's one, another thing we're kind of rushing through about letting things land and letting yeah. people soak in what that thing is, right? Alexis, how about you? I'm sorry, I was drifting asleep a little bit. It's okay. You have your writing? Yep. Okay. So let's try. One second. No problem. As Alexis is getting ready to, if anybody has, you can start thinking about questions or something that you wanted to work on. <coughs> you can ask me. We can go from there for our last um, few minutes. One second only, they let Alexis go and then we can get your question. Alexis, you ready? We're supposed to recite what we wrote yesterday, right? Or whatever you wanted to bring to the table today to work on. Okay. What I wrote was, I am a symbol of peace, a, dis a descendant of fortune, a promise, a key to prosperity, and a need, not a want. Okay, excellent. I also, I, also wrote, mm -hmm. I also wrote, we are descendants of nomads, children of a prophecy, different, and a new tomorrow. All right, good. So two things I'll tell you. So I'm going to ask you to read it again and just read them both together without stopping. And then also the same note that I gave O'Neilly. Try to come, I want you to say it in a way that's, makes me get it like I understand what it is that you what the message is that you want to send right and I'm sitting in the back of the room and you're trying to convey this message of what you need what you want to me so I can get it how would that change your delivery and then just say the whole thing together okay I am a symbol of peace, a descendant of fortune, a promise, a key of prosperity, a need, not a want. We are descendants of nomads, children of a prophecy, different, and a new tomorrow. Excellent. There was such a big difference. 
So I'm gonna not say anything. Onile and Leonice, what, what, how did you, or what difference did you hear in Alexis's re first reading versus her second reading? If you heard any, I'm assuming you did. Yeah. yeah. Um, she, she, she put more like emphasis and more emotions into what she was trying to tell us. The yeah. second time? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Have more feelings. More yeah. feelings? Have more feelings, I would say. Okay. Good. Miss Parker, did you notice a difference? Yes, I definitely noticed the difference. The second one, it seemed like she a little bit more like believed in what mm -hmm. she was saying. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I could hear. And I would just note one other thing too. You guys are very talented writers and oftentimes I, I'm seeing or um, students writing and, and uh, we just had a poet here on the island as well. And the, the messages I was reading were really amazing. But when the delivery happened, oftentimes I think students feel like maybe um, their words aren't important. So they tend to rush. And so there's no periods for people to rest and think about what they just said. And they kind of tend to, um, besides rushing the words, it's kind of like, it makes it so that the, the audience can't understand what you're saying. And your words are powerful and we want to hear. So don't feel like, you know, when adults are listening, you've got to rush through your statements. Like what Ms. Um, James is saying, take your time, do those pauses, enunciate so that your listeners can actually really hear and um, understand your thoughts. Cause you guys, um, you guys matter. You're the next generation and we want to hear from you guys. Yes. Yes, so I could feel it a lot more in her second one. And and your words, all three, all of you guys' words are very powerful. So very, very, very. I was bragging about you guys yesterday. Um <coughs> Anila, you had a question. And just actually, sorry again. Um, yes to everything Miss Miss Parker just added that is a lot of times, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, I I'm wrong. I, I think young people feel not heard and not listened to by adults. And so when the platforms do open up that adults are listening, you want to make sure they understand your point and make sure they hear the words and your point of view and your perspective. And these are just a couple of things to ensure that that message um, lands in the brains of adults. Um, Onile, what was your question? So we're gonna move into question and answer and then we'll read these. Um, well, we'll see, let me see. Go ahead, Onile. You had a question? Yeah, I was wondering if we were gonna be doing more writing prompts today. And somebody else said they felt like writing. So maybe we'll do a quick five, seven minute writing prompt. Cause I think Leonice, you said you wanted to write. Uh, yeah, if we can. Yeah, no, we can fit. I can, we can do a quick, quick one. Alexis, you feel like doing some writing? No, thanks. Okay. So, Ms. James, I guess the other quick question or the other quick thought is, um, as an actress, um, obviously, if you guys know you're going to perform, you're going to practice your pieces, saying them out loud, not just in your head, but actually, you know, in front of a mirror, in front of your family members, and practice before you get up on stage. But I'm sure it's happened to you before, Miss James. You get up on stage and you by accidentally get a word mixed up. You stumble on something. Um, I think that's often, um, you know, the mark of somebody that's professional that they are able to just keep going with it. Do you have any um, anything to, to add to, to to let them know that you know these things happen and how to bounce back? I guess. Yes, and so thank you for that question. Um, <clears throat> So yes, it's happened. I've been on stage in a play where other people are depending on me and I skipped like whole scenes or forgot a line or said the wrong line. So it took me to another part in the play where we weren't supposed to go. Those things always happen, right? The trick is, and I actually said this the other day on social media that the biggest lesson that I've learned in theater and performing is you have to let it go and keep it go. And you literally have to let it go. Um, because other people are depending on you. That's the biggest reason for me, like, okay, how do I fix this? 
right? And so I'm, I try, I kind of, you kind of have to improv until you figure out where you are and where you need to be. But you can't really hem and haw about it because there are people in the audience or there's somebody right next to you that's waiting for you to, to figure it out. And sometimes they help because there's somebody there. But if you're on the stage alone, what do you do, right? The thing is, the audience, you know, the audience didn't read your script. The audience doesn't know your poem. The audience doesn't know the choreography. So you kind of have to make, my grandmother used to say, make every, every spoil is a style, right? Kind of make it a style. So yeah, I meant to fall down. <laughs> that was part of the choreography. Oh yeah, so my, uh, so a friend that I, 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 a person that I know is um, playing Tina, um, well, She's the understudy for Tina on Broadway and she was on and her wig fell off in the middle. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people on stage, I mean, in the audience. And she's in the middle of her primary keep on rolling um, routine and the wig falls off. And she did not miss a beat. She didn't miss a beat. And the whole thing went viral and people are talking about it. I was going to say, I saw it. I saw that. Yes. You did that her. Okay. That's prime example of keep it flowing. The audience doesn't know. Well, that was kind of obvious. Her wig fell off, but we didn't know what was going on. We didn't get taken out of it. So Ms. Parker, I think the quickest answer, and I'm talking a lot, um, is that the audience doesn't know any better and you kind of just have to let it go. You can hem and haw later, but it doesn't make any difference because you can't make it back. You can't make back that moment. So you just got to keep going and move on to the next thing and keep going and, and, and think about it later. Well, how did I forget that or what happened? Yes, and improve for the next time, but you kind of have to just let it go and keep on going. So before we do the writing though, any other questions? Alexis, Leonice, any questions? Or comments, Alexis, you awake? <laughs> no, I don't have any questions. Yeah. Yes, I'm awake. Okay. All right, any questions or comments? And I, I think you guys no. that are interested in, in being um, actresses too, uh, the community theater here on St. Croix, I know everything's been kind of shut down because of COVID. Um, mm -hmm. So make sure again, that your family members are probably on social media and reaching out and hearing. And again, um, you know, we're gonna try to see if Miss James will come there here on St. Croix again, um, come back um, to visit her uh, friends and family that definitely miss her here on St. Croix yeah, and, see I know. If, and see if she'll come and do some um do some acting um classes here at CMC Arts okay so um definitely keep your ears open and hopefully to like some of your schools you might have a teacher that might want to take on that uh the drama role too as well okay yeah. so yeah. you know practice 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 to be a good actress uh, um, so Ms. James, you're going to have us do another writing prompt today. That sounds great. Um, yes, let's do, it's two, 526. So let's do just a, a four minute writing. Let's do five minutes. Can we go like till 535? We can do a five minute writing prompt and then, um, that's perfect. Um, just wrap up. All right, great. So everybody get out your pen and paper. I'm gonna just call out some words, some emotions, and you can kind of free write on those, okay? Um, so the first one, powerful. You just keep writing. Let me set my timer as we're writing on that word powerful. Worthy. Wait, say that, please repeat. Worthy. What does joy feel like?
strength. Can I please um, read the second one? I said powerful, worthy. What does joy feel like and strength? Okay. Describe the most beautiful thing you have ever seen. Tell me about your favorite beach spot on St. Croix. Finish this sentence. They don't understand. My favorite smell. My favorite thing to eat. And then we'll finish with our um, <clears throat> prompts that we started with first at the top of our hour. I am. We'll keep going. I want. I need. And I feel. Let's do one more minute. You can continue writing on those last ones or go back to something that you started before. Just one more minute. Excuse me. All right, we're just about done. Start wrapping up your last thing. Okay, ladies. I see Amelia still writing. She's the only one on camera. You can't tell. Keep going, no, finish up, finish up. Good. So I have a question for you all. 
what would you like to see more of as far as these two these past two days if let's say we had a third day right um what would you like to see more of i want to do i was the class itself is just super fun um so i would like to see probably um hmm, really everything that we did today because it was very fun and i did like writing and i like the exercises that you do with us and stuff so yeah all right cool good to know note to self anybody else or any last or any other questions or comments before we close out <coughs> no no thank you anile for being so brave and going jumping head first what did they say? What's his name, Miss Parker? On the deep end, feet first, jumping in feet first. Yeah, d diving right on in. So I, I yeah, yes, I, I love it. it. Yeah, I love all the energy you guys brought. And again, thank you, Miss James. And I have to say, these uh, these props. It's amazing what triggers in your mind from memories as you're writing, and then you just move right on to the next one, to, to the next one. So no time to edit. So I know no, I exactly, and that's the point. Just to get it yeah. down, and hopefully, like you all can i don't know if does anybody journal or does anybody write let's say you write poetry or stories i journal. not huh i journal you journal so maybe some of these can be like you can use them for your own journal practice or your own journaling practice or maybe you want to start writing some more um or maybe even i know you make things you're an artist leonise you can do this process to find out um, or delve deeper into something that you're working on visually as well. And you, I know you mentioned dance and the same thing. You can use these to bring <clears throat> your own perspective because yes, we all learn choreography as dancers or you learn a script, but the trick is, and this is for everybody, to bring your own perspective to that performance, even if it's a learned piece of script or a learned section of choreography what does leonice's choreo or dance look like what is her interpretation of that right and these things kind of help you um not kind of they do help you figure out how you see the world what is your thoughts because sometimes we don't know what our thoughts are until we're asked about them which makes a lot of sense, right? Because we could have the same actress could read the same script, but her, the way she pronounces things, her little, uh, the way that she, you know, moves around the stage is going to be completely different from another actress. So again, bringing that in, your own uniqueness to yeah. the stage. And it's mm -hmm. so funny. I had a, and I was like, there's no time, Oshana, because I was going to, I had a clip of um, Sidney Poitier and uh, what's his name? Puff Daddy, they they both did a raisin in the sun. So Puff Daddy did an interpretation of the raisin. He was in a uh, production of a raisin in the sun, and of course the famous Sidney Poitier um, movie <clears throat> of that play of the same scene. Um, but to talk about bringing your own personal style to 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 pieces and to performance. But we'll save that for another day. We didn't have time in an hour. <laughs> Next time you come to visit. And I forgot yes. too, we got, we got to get you for dance also too. So you are I definitely- I know, so many things. Alexis, yes. any comments, questions, last minute before we go? Did you want no. them to share? I'm sorry, uh, Ms. James and Alexis. Did you want them to share a line or two from what you we just did? Does anybody want to do that quickly before we leave? Uh, sure, I'll do it very quickly. Okay. Okay, um, so I'm gonna do the I am, like the kind of like poem. So, mm -hmm. I am strong and beautiful. I want to achieve my dreams. I need to stay focused and I feel happy and loved. I think that's a great way to close out, Miss Parker. Um, I, think, I think so too. So, um, I'm gonna ask you guys, I'll stay online for one second here, but I just wanna close out our video. And again, thank Miss uh, James for coming today. 
Thank you for those of you that joined us today for Zoom session and also uh, to the St. Croix Foundation for helping um, to um, allow us to have this great um, uh, educator here with us today and for our Art at Home series for March. So again, thank you to St. Croix Foundation. Thank you to Ms. James and thank you to the students. Take care and we'll see you guys for the next one.